Hello, this is Hildron101010 from the Computer Clan on thecomputerclan.com with a brief history of the Mac OS. Now, I do have a history series called The History of the Mac OS, but that goes in depth in the whole company. Um, Steve Jobs and what he's done, what Apple was doing at the time, Steve Jobs getting fired, the rebirth of Apple, all that stuff. That was about the history of everything. This is just showing you the changes in the OS over time and the features that were added. So if you want to watch the history video, go to my channel, select upload, and just search history of the Mac OS, and you'll see part 1, 2, 3, and 4, I believe, are the available parts as of now. So that contains all the history. This will just show the features in the OS as it has evolved over the years. So enjoy. Macintosh System 1 was the birth of a revolution, bringing the graphical user interface, which was the desktop environment, and the mouse to the market. The initial release had a desktop that was pretty simplistic, but still very usable, and was compatible with quite a bit of software. The Finder was the file browser, in which you would save files in, browse through them, and select files you want to open inside various windows. On the top was the menu bar. This has been in every version of the Mac OS. The menu bar is what contains all the menus that specify to a certain application, unlike in Windows where all the menu bars are inside separate windows. On the far left of the screen was the Apple menu, which was home to the desk accessories which could be opened inside any program. Since the early version of the system did not support full multitasking, this menu was convenient for when you were in a separate application you could also open up these little desk accessories without having to close that application. It also was the home to about panel, so if you were in Mac Paint or Mac Draw, for instance, the Apple menu would display an item called About Mac Draw. You would click on it and get an About panel. On the desktop, it would say About the Finder, and then you would get Finder information. So that is basically what it was used for. Now, the system was pretty revolutionary at the time, but there was one small problem, and the problem was that it was based on a technology called MFS, which stood for Macintosh File System. The system couldn't really do subdirectories, so everything was basically stored in one place. That add-on for storing files in subdirectories wasn't added until a little bit later in the system. Macintosh System 2 didn't look much different but did have some very nice enhancements. Apple Talk was introduced in this version of the system, and new drivers for the laser writer printers from Apple were added into the system as well. In System 2.1, a software update, HFS was introduced, which stands for Hierarchy File System, which means you can now have subdirectories. But this was mainly made for support with the Hard Disk 20, the first hard drive manufactured by Apple for the Macintosh. Macintosh System 3 is where the Macintosh system started getting really good. HFS was now throughout the entire system, so that now means subdirectories are supported in just about everything, so the new folder command was added to the file menu. Support for SCSI was also introduced, and AppleShare was introduced. A shutdown command was also added to the special menu so you could properly shut down your computer, and a new feature called MiniFinder which was introduced in System 3 looked kind of like this. It was basically a simplified finder with a few buttons on a sidebar to the right, and you could load this option from the normal finder via the special menu. Macintosh System 4 was more of a maintenance update than anything. It added support for the Apple desktop bus, color, high resolution displays, and the Motorola 68020 processor. Macintosh System 5.x was the start of multitasking for the Macintosh. It introduced a new technology called MultiFinder, which would let you multitask on your system, and an application switcher with a nice interface, at the time that is, to switch between your applications. In Macintosh System 6.x, MultiFinder basically stayed the same, but it added new supports for the Motorola 68030 processor and the new 1.44 megabyte super drive for floppy disks from Apple. Also, the finder version number 
stayed consistent with the system version number, unlike before, and that did confuse some people, so they fixed it up in 6.0. In addition, in these system updates, the system also received some user interface tweaks that made the system a little bit easier to use for the end user. Macintosh System 7.x was a huge release. System 7 required a hard disk drive because it had built-in mandatory multitasking, no more multi-finder, it had virtual memory support, it had a feature called aliases, which were links that you could make to documents and applications to move them wherever you want in the system, new subfolders for extensions and control panels, they were easier to organize, updated graphics, new icons, and a fresher interface throughout the whole system with color throughout the whole system for monitors that support color. There was also a customizable Apple menu. You could put whatever you want in there. No more restriction to only desk accessories. Desk accessories were completely gone now. They didn't even use that name anymore. Apple Script was also introduced, which was an automated scripting language and a built-in editor so you could edit the code. There was a new application switcher on the right side of the menu bar which let you switch applications and also hide applications completely in the background. A new type of help application, or utility, more rather, was introduced called Balloon Help, which was a process that would run in the background displaying tooltips for parts of the interface you need help with. A new version of QuickDraw was also introduced in the system, providing 32-bit color imaging for the system. And Apple File Exchange was also introduced in this version of the system, to increase compatibility with PCs. The next version of the Macintosh System 7 series, version 7.5, included several new features, such as the Apple Guide, a new help guide for the system, Stickies, which is a great note-taking system and we still use it today, Window Shade, the way of minimizing windows in the old system. It wasn't like what you did in Windows, though, where you minimize them to the taskbar. This is where you press the button or in this version of the system, you double-click the top of the window, the title bar, and it collapses into itself. A control strip for quickly changing settings without having to open a control panel. An extensions manager to manage the system extensions and settings you want configured on your Macintosh. Power talk for servers. A launcher, which was kind of like the dock, only it was its own window, so it wasn't as customizable or as flexible. And hierarchy support in the Apple menu. In Macintosh System 7, if you hovered over a folder in the Apple menu, you could only click it and open it up in the Finder. But in 7.5, with hierarchy support, you can actually browse the folder without even leaving the menu. In Macintosh System 7.5.1, a software update to 7.5, there was a new startup screen added that shows the Finder logo and says Mac OS on it. The system was now addressed as Mac OS instead of Macintosh System or just simply System but it wasn't officially named macOS until version 7.6 came out a while later. In macOS 7.6, it was official. It was officially addressed as macOS instead of any other name. It had a revamped extensions manager that made it easier to troubleshoot problems with the computer and to send specific configurations to others. It also gave specific information about that extension that the user wants to look at. It has more bundled internet tools, such as the option to install a web browser called CyberDog. It also had updated printing user interface to make it easier for people to print, and it updated performance while printing to network printers on PowerPC-based systems. It also came with a much easier installation process that also checked the disk for any errors before you installed to reduce the risk of having any bugs on the system when the system software was updated. Mac OS 8 was originally going to be called Mac OS 7.7, .7, but to kill off the cloning market, it was changed to 8 as a loophole to get out of the license agreement for using OS 7.x systems on the cloned computers. So technically, with this loophole, the cloning market couldn't use OS 8 because it was no longer OS 7. Some of the features it had was a new multi-threaded finder, which was much faster than the previous version, a platinum user interface, which looked familiar, but was more metallic, and it also featured themes, or skins, to change the overall color scheme of the system. 8.1 introduced HFS+, Plus, which was an extension of the hierarchy file system, and USB support. 8.5 introduced Sherlock, 
a revolutionary search engine to search data on local computers and hard drives, servers, and on the internet. And 68K code began to be replaced by modern PowerPC code. And in OS 8.6, there was a new nano kernel and PowerPC G4 support for the G4 Macintosh computers coming out in the future. Mac OS 9 was claimed to be the best internet OS. It had lots of internet power tools and was a very great system, introducing over 50 new features. It included improved support for airport wireless. That really helped it be a great internet OS. It had Sherlock version 2, so all the great features in Sherlock introduced in 8.5 were even better in version 2 of Mac OS 9. It had the support for multiple users to log into the computer. It had voice activation passwords to log into the computer. Keychain, which was a password manager with a master password where you can control all the other passwords. It had auto updating for software on your system so you can always be up to date with drivers or any other software so you constantly keep getting the best performance out of the system. It had the option to encrypt files and it had a built-in network browser. So these things made it a great internet OS. In the 9.1 software update, the Finder had integrated CD burning and a window menu to manage through all the windows you had opened in the Finder. 